Titans and welcome back to Titans Sports, the platform that brings you the best coverage on all Cal State Fullerton athletics. And I'm Brandi Flores. And I'm Alyssa Frider. Now it is March and that means March Madness is finally here. Men's basketball hosted their final regular season game against Hawaii. A win would mean they would clinch the second seed and a loss could result in a potential tiebreaker against UC Santa Barbara. Now let's head over to Titan Gym. It was the last home game for the seniors on the team and they were honored before the tip off before senior night. Cal State Fullerton comes out of the gates quick on a 7-0 run. Senior Khalil Ahmad was leaking on the fast break to get an open dunk to cap off the run. Halfway through the first half and Devon Clare cuts to the hoop and finds an open Jackson Rowe under the rim for an easy deuce. Fullerton leads 14-12. Now in the final seconds of the first half, Hawaii's Drew Bugs brings the ball up the court and drain the running three-pointer at the buzzer to cut Fullerton's lead to one. Titans led the Rainbow Warriors 34-33 at halftime. Jackson Rowe would finish the night with a team-high 16 points. The Titans would trail by one after Rowe hits the fadeaway jumper. However, Hawaii didn't look back in the second half and would spoil Fullerton's senior night, winning 71-59. Here's what Fullerton's coach Taylor had to say about the loss. I got to be a better coach. I got to be a better coach. I got to find a way to motivate my guys at this time of year uh, on such a special night. I've got to find a way to, to um, you know, be more responsible for our energy and our competitive spirit when we come out of the locker room and during, throughout the course of the game. I've got to be better in that particular area. After conference play finished, UCI takes the top spot and ended with a record of 15-1. Santa Barbara was in the two spot, and because Cal State Fullerton did lose to Hawaii, they ended up taking the number three spot. Now heading into tournament play this week, UCI will take on eighth seed UCR, UCI will take number seven Cal State Northridge, and the Titans will take on UC Davis first at 2.30 p.m. this Thursday. The tournament will be broadcasted on ESPN, and as always, it will be a single game elimination process. Women's basketball came off a major win against rivals Long Beach State last Thursday. The game came down to the wire, but Fullerton won 50-47. The team played their final regular season matchup against UC Riverside over the weekend in a game that was neck and neck until the very end. Let's take a look at that highlight. The sixth ranked Titans look to beat the third ranked Highlanders on senior night in their final game before the Big West Tournament. Titans had no trouble scoring early on, outscoring Riverside 23-12 at the end of the first quarter. Freshman Amy Book put in a solid performance, scoring 14 points on the night and shooting 4 for 6 from 3. Reyna Perez would also get in on the action with a killer crossover and she steps back to make the 2-point jumper despite a solid offensive effort from the Titans in the first quarter. Riverside was able to get their way back into the game. The Titans would turn the ball over 21 times by the end of the game and allow Riverside to make the comeback. Turnovers and open threes were the sore spot for the Titans. Riverside's Malou de Kergret seen here scoring from three. De Kergret scored four of Riverside's nine three-point shots and would ultimately help defeat the Titans 75-67 to on senior night. Now let's talk about the Big West standings for women's basketball. UC Davis is sitting in first place and Cal State Fullerton is currently in sixth place with a record of 6-10. The Titans will take on Long Beach State again on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. for the first round of the Big West Tournament. Speaking of the Big West Tournament, let's send it over to Kush and Nathan for their predictions of the tournament. Guys? Thank you, Brandy, and welcome to this edition of Inside the Basket. I'm your host, Kush Parikh, with my co-host, Nathan McHugh. Nathan, it is my favorite time of the month, March Madness, Big West Tournament right around the corner. Let's start with women's basketball. They're 6-10 and 10 in the Big West Conference, 14-15 and 15 overall. What has Coach Harada done to turn this program around into a successful one? Uh, well, they've been able to, two of the, the best players on the team uh, stayed when they could have left two years ago. And... Uh, He's also done really well recruiting. I mean, Amy Book, uh, a freshman, she's one of the best players in the conference, uh, one of the best three-point shooters, one of the best in field goal percentage. So I think that's why they've taken the step from ninth uh, in the Big West last year to sixth. And uh, yeah, they're already in the Big West tournament in two years after you know, only seven wins combined the last two 
seasons uh, prior to Coach Harada's arrival. Yeah. And you mentioned about Deja Smith, Jade Vega, Reina Perez. They're averaging all double in double figures. Uh, Deja Smith's leading the Big West Conference in uh, field goal percentage, and you have Jade Vega and Reina Perez at the top of the conference in assists per game. So all that th this season. They finished out 6-10, and 10, which is good enough to give them the sixth seed in the Big West Tournament. They'll be taking on Long Beach State on Tuesday night. Uh, tell me what you think about that. Uh, I mean, I think it's a great matchup. I mean, the first two games, um, they got off to really slow starts. So I think if uh, they need to get off to a much better start. Um, and then I think one of the, the players to, to watch for Cal State Fullerton, to me, would be Carolyn Gill because even though um, – she didn't uh, score any points in the the game against Long Beach. She to me was one of the one of the best players on the court. I mean, rebounds, assists, steals. You know, showing how much you can affect the game without scoring. Um, and she was the one that inbounded the ball to Reina Perez for the the game winning three. I'm looking forward to this Long Beach State game. Uh, as regards to the Big West tournament, who do you think is going to come out on top? Uh, well, I think that. I mean, CSUN is the defending champions, but um, I think well, UC Davis, uh, Morgan Birch, she's going to be really difficult to, to stop. Um, I, don't, I think it, it's pretty even. Um, so I, I'll, say, uh, I'll say UC Davis wins this year. Yeah, it's a bold pick. Um, yeah. Let's go into men's basketball now. They're 10 and 6 in the Big West Conference. As we know, they had a rough preseason schedule, turned it around in conference season, uh, but they have lost three of their last four games. What has been going on with the men's basketball team? Well, for the most part, they've gotten off to slow starts. I mean, the game against Hawaii uh, wasn't that way. They actually got up 7 nothing as opposed to down 6 or 7 nothing. But they, they just haven't sustained it, and um, you know they haven't been able to build on the momentum. And um, I think with the Hawaii game, they were up by 7 with under – you know, 30 or 40 seconds to go before the half, and they give up a three. Then they turn the ball over when the shot clock was off and give up another three. And they never really could, rec they never really recovered from, you know, giving up those six points. And they, once Hawaii took the lead early in the second half, they never, uh, they never relinquished it. So I think they just need to, you know, if they get behind or, you know, things start going the other way, um, they just need to, Get the momentum back, or or do something, change up their offense or defense, and try to try to find a spark that way if if need be. I think they've had a lack of energy these last couple games and losses as well. Um, in that winning streak that they were having before and during conference play, a lot of their bench players were coming off the bench and producing and helping them with that big energy off the bench. I think in the last four games they've lost a lot of that, and right now with the Big West tournament right around the corner, it is not a good time to be losing energy. I think. Coach Taylor needs to spark, light a spark uh, under the, this team, and hopefully they will be defending their Big West championship and repeat, which is the first time in program history. Right. So they play UC Davis in the quarterfinals on Thursday at the Honda Center. What do you think the outcome will be? Uh, I think Cal State Fullerton will win. Uh, they, they split in the regular season, uh, each team winning at home. Um, but I, I think, you know, in some ways a loss at the end of the season – um, at home can kind of um, can kind of spark them. I mean, it did. They lost to Hawaii at home in the same position last year, um, and then they were able to go on the run and win the, the Big West tournament. So I think that I think they'll win, but I think again it's going to be right down the wire. It'll probably be a. It seems like every time. Well, the two times they played in the Big West tournament previous, it's been a two or three point game, and I don't expect it to be any different. Yeah, and from a stats perspective, Fullerton is second in the Big West in field goal percentage, but they're dead last in three-point percentage and three points attempted. Running a three-guard lineup as they do a small ball lineup, you'd expect them to take more threes, but I think taking it inside the paint and not having the size to take it in the paint, I think it's making them really one-dimensional, which may right. be why teams are adjusting their game plans to the team. So hopefully Coach uh, Taylor can do something different because guys like Wayne Arnold, Josh Pitts, and Jamal Smith, who actually has been stepping it up during this losing streak, I've liked what I've seen from him, um, shooting the threes, being more aggressive, taking it to the rack, dishing it out to open players, that type of stuff. Um, but 
on the defensive end, they, or sorry, on the offensive end, they are still turning the ball over. Why is that? Uh, well, I think because they're, they're just not, uh, they don't seem to have a, a definitive point guard. I mean, sometimes they have Austin play point or Khalil or Kyle, but, um, you know, they're just not getting the, the production from the bench. And then one thing that's surprising is how inconsistent um, Josh Pitt's minutes have been. I mean, he didn't play at all against Hawaii. I think that they could have really used him, especially in that second half when they, you know, Hawaii had all the momentum. Um, I don't really understand why your best, you know, low post, uh, you know, center or big doesn't play at all in a, a crucial game that determines seeding. The end. Yeah, and looking on, I, I agree with that. And looking on to the defensive side of things on the stat sheet, they are third in, in the Big West in defensive field goal percentage and second in um, three-point percentage, giving opponents three-point percentage. So their defense is there, but they're still allowing the sixth most points in conference. Why is that? I think because they, they take too many chances and uh, – you know, their, their guards get beat off the dribble too much, Kyle and Khalil. Um, you know, sometimes they don't play. I mean, they have the ability to play very good defense, but it, at times they, they just don't have the, I guess, the energy or the uh, play with the kind of effort defensively that they need to. Um, so, I, I mean, I just think that they, they just can't really sustain momentum re, uh, lately. Now, last thing, what is your prediction for the Big West Tournament? Who is taking it all? Uh, well, I still think Cal State Fullerton will, will win the Big West Tournament. Um, I, but, you know, in order for that to happen, they're going to need to, you know, get production from their bench, but also they're going to need to play Josh Pitts, um, you, know, um, you know, meaningful minutes. I mean, maybe even start in one game. I think they, they need to control the paint and then, That'll lead to more open threes, and they need to be uh, not as passive when they get open threes and not look to drive. Maybe look to pump fake or look to um, just shoot more threes, and they have the ability to, to be a very good three-point shooting team. They just don't take a lot of them. Yeah, so the Big West Tournament for men starts on Thursday. This is where names are made. Kyle Allman Jr. made his name for, self, for himself last season in the Big West Tournament, winning the MVP, putting himself on the national map with the Lou Henson Award, all that stuff. So we'll, we'll see how this season pans out. But that is it for this edition of Inside the Basket. We'll send it back to Brandy and Alyssa at the desk. Take it away, ladies. The Titan baseball team traveled to Albuquerque for their first three-game series away from Goodwin Field. Their opponent would be New Mexico, who ended up taking the first two games of the series, first 6-4 and then 18-11. to 11. So now let's go back to Albuquerque, where the Titans were trying to avoid the sweep in the final game. Bottom of the first scoreless game, Daniel Cope goes up the middle to score Hank LaFour and C.D. Valenzuela. Titans will lead 2 to nothing. Top of the sixth, Fullerton down one. Jake Pavlicic almost hits it over the fence, but would drive in two runs instead. Titans are now up 6-5. The rally would continue. Jason Brando lifts one down the right field line, and Tanner Baker can't make the play, so a run would score. Titans lead 7-5. Bottom of the sixth, the Lobos respond. Connor Mang hits a double play ball, but the throw by Valenzuela is off the mark. One run scores, and we're tied at 7. Top of the seventh, Isaiah Garcia with a runner on, sends a two-run shot to the parking lot in left field, and the Titans wouldn't look back from there. Fullerton takes game three, 13 to seven. Last week, baseball hosted a two-game series against undefeated Arizona State at home. Their first faceoff on Tuesday, the Sun Devils scored all six earned runs early in the second and third innings. Meanwhile, the Titans were scoreless until the eighth inning, where they fought back pretty hard to score four runs, although it was just too little too late, and they would drop the series opener six to four. However, the Titans were not able to get the redemption in the second game because it was canceled due to the heavy rain we had here in Southern California. Hank LaFort was able to continue his on-base streak with a walking earn in the sixth inning. He is currently leading the country, having been on base 55 straight games. His current on-base percentage is 386, and he is hitting 333. Titan softball headed north this past weekend for the Silicon Valley Classic. 
The highly anticipated game against San Jose State ended up being canceled due to weather conditions. On Friday, the Titans faced a doubleheader, losing 5-0 to Nevada, but they came back strong against Weber State, winning 1-0. Cal State Fullerton kept their momentum going for Saturday's doubleheader. They took two Ws, taking a 3-0 win over Northern Kentucky and an 8-1 win over the Santa Clara Broncos. Fullerton closed their weekend with a bang. Junior right-handed pitcher Sophie Frost threw a complete game shutout. Throughout the game against Northern Kentucky, she only allowed five hits while striking out six. Junior catcher Val Julia Valenzuela took the charge of the offense against the Broncos and went a perfect 3-for-3 three three with a double and a walk. Now let's get you guys caught up with In Case You Missed It. Thanks, guys. I'm Corey Johnson, keeping you up to date in case you missed it. Swinging to the golf course, the men's golf team finished in first place at the Sacramento State Invitational. Fullerton set a tournament record shooting 17 under par 847. Four Titans finished in the top 20, including the individual winner, Jack Dyer. Meanwhile on the court, the women's tennis team had a dominant performance against Hawaii, winning 6-1. The Titans would then defeat rivals Long Beach State 4-3, and showed no love whatsoever for Youngstown State and a 7-0 victory. These wins would push their record to 7-2 overall, and now we race over to the finish line as the track and field team hosted their Ben Brown Invitational. Fullerton won six of the events, led by personal best from Charles Kelly in the men's 110-meter hurdles and Samantha Huerta in the women's one-mile run. Putting over towards golf, the women's team recently competed in the Gold Rush Invitational on February 26. They finished overall in 14th place with 57 over par. Now let's head over to Titan Timeline for a preview of this week's upcoming games. Thanks, Corey. What's up, guys? I'm Curtis Redman, and let's check out some of the upcoming games with this week's edition of Titan Timeline. Starting off on the diamond, the baseball team will give, begin a four-game homestand against USC on Tuesday and then finish the week with a three-game series against James Madison. Swinging on over to the fairways, the golf team will travel up to San Francisco to take place in the two-day Olympic Club Intercollegiate. Throwing it back to the circle, the softball team is back at home as they look to keep their three-game win streak alive against Houston. They will then play four games in four days as they host the Easton Invitational Tournament where they will play Boston University, Harvard, DePaul, and then finish off with the College of Charleston. Serving it over to tennis, they look to build on their five-game win streak as they host the University of Pacific on Wednesday. They will then travel to Cal State Northridge where they will continue conference play as they currently sit in first in the Big West. Finishing strong with track and field, the team will be ready to race down to Irvine where they are set to compete in the UC Irvine Collegiate Classic. Now that this week's agenda is booked, Back to you guys at the desk. Well, folks, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning in for today's episode. You can watch our past episodes and game highlight packages on our YouTube channel. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CSUF Titan Sports and like us on Facebook to stay connected. Now, on behalf of all of us here at Titan Sports, I'm Brandi Flores. And I'm Alyssa Frider. Remember to keep those tusks up, Titans, and we'll see you next time.